what's the main purpose of the the Oracle 7 first? It really is um, an entry level kind of device. It was fun to use, easy to get set up on. It took me approximately five minutes um, to get run up and running on it. It's it's key. Uh, I guess claim to fame is it's 800 by 480 pixel TFT display with 720p resolution. Um, it's not a standard device. This is a Wi-Fi connectivity home tablet device. It's not going to be one something that you'll bring out around town and talk with. And that's the main differentiator between the Arco 7 and the Go Street. Go Street. Almost. Almost. So there's a clear differentiator here between the two devices. This is a 1.5 Android-based device. Uh, it's got built-in speakers, one each side here. Um, I wouldn't advise using those speakers. Uh, stick in your microphone or your headset instead, or plug it into your amplifier. It's got up to 8 gigabytes of memory with expansion to 32 using an SD micro slot. Uh, it's based on the R9, uh, 926 ET derivative, running at uh, 600 megahertz. The DSP processor out there in a few minutes. Is anybody curious as to who our is? Where they come from? Now, before I get into that, I'll talk about some of the ease of use aspects, but I think I touched on these a few minutes ago. Uh, the downside is it's 1.5 Android. And unfortunately, for some reason, that I still don't quite understand, Arcos limited it to the apps lib. The apps lib is the wrong library of Android applications. As you, as you know, the Android's key advantage, or the Android platform's key advantage, is that it's. it's on this. Who makes it? Do you know? Rockchip. You're, you're disqualified. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anybody else? TI? Nope. Mm -hmm. uh, I was hoping you'd say that, and I'll tell you fine in a second. <laughs> Anybody else can guess who, what the application processor is that makes it? And here's, uh, here, here's, a, here's a key point. If you do guess right, you get to keep this afterwards. And it works. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> my it. It's the Marvell one? Nope. Yeah, we have tape, so we can all these together. Video. Who? Video? Nope. We are. Who? We are. Nope. This is for two hundred dollars despite having been torn apart, it still works. Anybody else? Anybody want to guess? Samsung? Samsung. No. Qualcomm? Qualcomm? No. STC? No. No. ST Micro. Anybody else? Who? You heard him. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Okay, you can have it. Okay. It is rock chip. Happen for that. Um, that other chip on it was me. I gave it a dig with my screwdriver, getting the cap off. It had an EMI shield on it. I just took the shield off it and I jabbed the chip in the process. Um, so around the, um, the Marvel 8686, we've got the crystal oscillator on the upper right hand side. Um, again, the numbers missing there. Corrosion CPU on the left hand side. Anybody know where the ferocious comes from? Where? Yeah. Nope. Where you got it? Novell. Arvell, yeah, right. You got it. Okay. Did you tell him that? No, I didn't know anything. <laughs> the Marvell, yeah, the ferocious CPU is actually, um, it came out in 2003 when Marvell took a license on the ARM architecture. It's based on the ARM 5 uh, disk uh, instruction set, ISA instruction set, not ISA. The R5 instruction set architecture at the heart of the system. Uh, got all the stats there. SIVA, what's not too public, at least not yet anyway, was that it's based on the SIVA MM2000 DSP platform. Um, the platform that's based on the DSP X, the SIVA X DSP. And we talked earlier about that with SIVA just really coming on strong in the, the multimedia processing environment, right? Yeah, so and the X. The X is their low, low power branch of their uh, architecture. Yeah, so it's got the, the limitation on the apps library. It's definitely easy to use and fun, good battery life. Um, from my point of view, while, we, while this device is dim in terms of popularity because of the emerging devices such as the Galaxy and the, and the Dell, I think for the technology at the time, I think the design team did a really good job of keeping the cost down using the devices that they chose, the Marvell and the Rockstar system. Um, so that's the pros. So it's got the technical horsepower with the 2808 and very good programmability. And I think it achieved most of the main design objectives. Go ahead, John Brian. Um, although they're different use cases, uh, 
if you had to choose one for a Christmas gift, knowing what you know about both, which would you choose? Uh, on a budget of five forty nine, I'd pick the uh, L three. On a budget of two hundred dollars, you get two of those. For <laughs> yeah. I have two kids. I can split it out. But... Yeah, I mean, if I had if I had an infinite budget, I would go for the L three and a half because you can't plug that in. You can't do anything else in the house you can have. Right? You can plug it in, you can play it on your audio system, etc. So you can cancel that. And the L three does have HDMI output, right? So you can plug it into your TV, etc. So the video playback issue with I'm just uh, commenting at the end of the video. It's what's left of the teardown. But this is easy to put back, you say, huh? Yeah, it's, I kept it intact, uh, the connectivity intact, so um, at least the soldering. Because th there's no point in tearing apart the lithium battery. Yeah. So at least somebody can make use of it afterwards, right? So. Did you hear me say rock chip? No, I'm familiar no? with uh, the you said one video, so we believe. What is it? This is the okay. Dell, no? That's the, yeah. That's the main Dell stuff. Sure. All right. Am I, because it, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm at eight times. Okay. There is a live teardown here at the, the Arm Tech Con.